Hey Masters, today we're gonna talk about parallelism in Playwright. Okay guys, first of all, this repository or this code that I am gonna show you, it's pretty simple, but if you wanna reproduce the steps that I'll be doing here, you can come here to the framework or the repository Playwright test. And here you have the notes that I'll be reading. Uh, if you wanna take a look as well of the commands that I'll be using. They are over here and I'll try to put this repository in the description. And also guys, please come here to join media, look for play, uh, playlists. And this playlist over here, Playwright JavaScript tutorial, has a lot of videos for you guys about Playwright. You can see how to use Playwright with Visual Studio Code extension, UI mode, uh, some tips and tricks that I created here. Also API testing, how to mock an API request, how the fixtures and page object model work together, visual testing, CLI commands, and also how to use parameters in your test. I know this is a bit of a spam, but I think it's important that you know this information because here you have like a lot of free information where you can start learning about Playwright, okay? Let's continue now talking about parallelism. All right, masters, from my point of view, if you read the documentation, you're gonna understand everything. However, always it's important to check how it works in real life. And this is my goal with this video. You're gonna see, and I'm gonna try to guide you to how to execute a simple demo, and you can see how the parallelism works and how we can change some flags to get different results, okay? So in order to uh, achieve this, I created a couple of tests under the parallelism folder, okay? That's it. If I open the test file number one, I have a couple of them, test file number one and test file number two, okay? If I open the test file number one, you're gonna see four different tests over here. Each of it has the word parallel. Okay, at the beginning. This is the word that I'll be using to run all the tests that have the word parallel over here, okay? Then I have test file number one, which is the reference for the test file that I have here, right? This is this is like a simple syntax. And then I have test case number one, test case number two, test case number three, and test case number four. I have the same uh, kind of um, syntax for the second file. The only change is, the, the, is that this is the test file number two for each of the test cases, obviously, right? Beautiful. Okay, and also guys, if you open here under the test, um, you're gonna see a, a console log with the same title that I have here, just to print uh, the execution order in the console. And then I have a wait for timeout of zero or five, because I wanna show you like with a bit of a bit of a slow, what is going on in the execution time, okay? That's beautiful, guys. Let's go ahead and take a look of how this works. All right, masters, as you can see over here, I increased the timeout to 10 seconds, okay? Uh, in each of the test files that I have over here, okay? And I want to run the following command for you guys, which is mpx playwright test, as always, this is the basic command uh, as, as we have seen before. And then here we have a new kind of flag for you, probably which is dash G. It is gonna look for all the tests in our framework and it is gonna filter with the ones that have the parallel in the title, okay? And if you remember, I created every single test with the title parallel at the beginning, okay? Then I'm gonna limit the workers to number two. Before I run this, I want to show you some notes that I have here in my, well, framework, in my repository, I'm sorry. Okay, by default, Playwright is gonna run tests in parallel. That's important, okay? And also we have to notice that, a, well, all tests is gonna, are gonna run in worker processes, okay? All workers have identical environments and each starts its own browser. That's important as well. You cannot communicate between workers, okay? And multiple test files are usually run in a single worker one after another, okay? Then we have another annotation here, which is saying workers are always shut down after a test failure to warranty the environment for the following tests, okay? That's the only thing that I wanted to tell you. Also, here you have another one. By default, tests in a single file are run in order. And I'm gonna show you and prove you that, okay? So I'm gonna run this command and you're gonna see that 
it is, it is going to start with test file number one and test case number one, test file number two and test case number one. Now it should start with the second test case of each file. Okay, let's see. There it is. Test file number two, test case number two, test file number one, and the test case number two. Now we should have the result of the execution of the third test case. And here it is. As you saw in my notes, tests in a single file are run in order. Okay, that's beautiful. We're going to have four of them, and then we're going to have the final results, and it is working perfectly fine. That is beautiful. Now we have like a basic understanding of how the workers and the execution order uh, work. That is beautiful, I think. Okay. So now that we have that in mind and we understand what is going on, mm, let me see. Okay. it That was the execution in Chromium. Okay. Now it is going with Firefox. That's why it is like um, taking so long. That is okay. But now you understand how the like parallelism, the basic parallelism works, right? Then we're going to see in the nodes. Let me show you my repository here. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. By default, Playwright is going to have a kind of worker amount, but you can use the flag dash dash workers and then the number of workers that you want to use. Okay. That is beautiful. Let me see if the execution finished. And obviously it is telling me that the <laughs> our test execution is slow because I have a, I have used on purpose a wait for timeout of 10 seconds. Okay. That is beautiful guys. Now let me show you another trick. Let's imagine that you don't want to use like parallelism at all. Okay. Well, the simple trick to do it is just execute the same command, but I'm, I, we just need to send the workers equal one. So it is going to start, well, uh, a simple execution using one simple worker. And that's it. You can see that, well, it is like executing the test file number one, test uh, the, the same test file, in, but now in the test case number two. And the reason of this is because we are only using one particular worker. And I just wanted to show you that as well. All right, masters, as I told you before, by default, tests in a single file are run in order. That's okay, right? But if you have many independent tests in a single file, you may want to run them in parallel with the command or the configuration test describe configure. And here I am giving you the link to the documentation to see some options. Why? Because we can configure this in the same test file or we can configure this globally for the framework itself. Also, we have another option. If I want to use parallel or fully parallel configuration, but only in one project, let's imagine that, for instance, I'm going to open my playwright config.js in this case, and you can see that I have a couple of projects, one project for Chromium and one project for Firefox, right? Here, I explained to you how to use parameters in the last video. So I go, so I recommend you to go ahead and look for the playlist that I just recommend you before and check how it works. But as you can see, I have a couple of projects here and I can perfectly use the configuration fully parallel here just to uh, have fully parallel just for the Chromium project. Okay. But I don't want to use that. I want to uh, allow the full framework using the fully parallel configuration here uh, set to true. Okay. And let me show you the difference. Be, uh, with the with the first execution that I just showed you before, okay? So I'm gonna run this command with two workers. Actually, I can use four of them or three. I'm gonna use three. Let me show you this. So as you can see, I have the test file number one, but now it is not running the order <laughs> with the logical order. I have test uh, case number three here, test case number two here, and then the number four here, and it is going to mix them. We are not following any order now, and we have a fully parallel uh, process configure in a single file. All right, masters, this feature that we have over here is about how we can limit the numbers for failed tests in a whole test suite by setting this configuration max failures. Okay. What is the purpose of this? Okay. Playwright will stop after reaching this number of failed tests. 
and, it's, and it is going to skip any tests that were not executed yet. Why this is kind of useful? This is useful to avoid wasting resources on broken test suites. All right, let me show you how it works. So I'm gonna come here um, to the test file number one, and I'm gonna have three assertions with a failure on purpose, just to show you this example, okay? And I'm, I'm gonna go to the repository because I have here, uh, uh, well, the test, I'm sorry, the command that you can use for this uh, demo as well, if you wanna use this repository for demos for your team or something. And here it is. Let me show you the command. npx playwright test. I'm gonna use dash g to use the parallel tests. I'm gonna have a couple of workers and I'll be setting the max failures to equal to three. All right, so I'm gonna run this and you're gonna see that the results <laughs> because this is the best way to understand how it works from my perspective, okay? Here it is. You can see that it is it is executing the, the, the framework and here we have some results. What is going on? If we take a look of the console, we have three failure, three, three failed test cases or test cases or three test scripts. Here we have the, the, the test scripts that or the test cases that are failing. And you can see that it is telling us that seven of them didn't run because at the moment that it had three failed and we met the, the well, the, the flag that we configured before, right? Which is max failures three. Well, the, the rest of the execution is gonna stop and it is not going to be executed anymore, okay? So this is interesting and you can use this configuration for your framework in CICD maybe. Well, because maybe the environment is not up and running or yeah, the, the framework needs to, to have a bit of rework, right? Because of some selectors change or something, right? So this is another interesting configuration that I just wanted to show you guys. Um, that's the last trick that I wanted to show you, but probably in the next um, video, we're gonna see this shard tests between multiple machines. Basically, we can use different like Docker containers or different machines to, well, kind of spread the test execution in, in different machines, basically. But this is another kind of video that I wanted to create for you because I may need to set up the GitHub Actions example and show you the results and, and all this stuff, okay? But that's it for now, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you can hit that on the subscribe button so you can uh, be aware of new up or upcoming videos. And please hit the like button as well because it is gonna help me a lot. Uh, thank you very much, guys, and, and I, I hope that you can see the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.